throughout today, Tideway Sculler School. So I think we would go back down to the start. Yeah. Race 127 is on the course now. Uh, heat of the Junior 8s. And it's Headington School B on the Berkshire Station. And a composite, Grange School and King's Chester on the Buckinghamshire Station. Obviously, Headington are a well-known name on the junior women's circuit. They were winners at the National Schools Regatta in the Junior 8 category, although, albeit this is their B crew. Uh, and at the moment, it is showing because the composite from Grange and King's Chester are certainly having the better of the opening exchanges. They've got about half a length. Yeah, so as you say, uh, Headington, the current holders of this, the Junior 8s, for the Peabody Cup. So they won it last year um, and they've managed to put out two 8s in this category. And I saw an absolutely fantastic, well, two wonderful quads out from them yesterday as well um, in the juniors and in the senior quads. Um, huge depth. But this is their B crew and... Uh, they're not, you know, they're not, they're not having it their own way against this Grange School King's, King's Chester composite. So you can see the two colours uh, for the Grange School and the, and the King's Chester there in that boat. But I mean, I just love this. Here we've got juniors, and it's really, really worth noting that here you've got these junior girls in the middle. A lot of them will be in the middle of their GCSE programme. They will have had exams yesterday. They'll have exams on Monday and they're able to get their heads into this race, these side-by-side -side racing this weekend. Some of them, and they won't be neglecting their revision. They'll have their books, uh, they'll have their books with them and they'll be revising under, under trees in breaks. Um, the dedication that it takes uh, for these junior girls and, and what it gives them in terms of discipline. Um, you know, the rowing discipline feeds their academic discipline and they very, they very usually succeed in both. And we see what a, what a cracking race between these two crews. A B crew not looking like a B crew not by <laughs> any stretch of the imagination. I think the fact that they're holding up this composite crew, which must have been put together um, with the thought of going far in this competition, uh, the fact that a B crew from Headington, and I'm not at all surprised because the programme that Ryan Domain runs down there at Headington is, is just it's remarkable. I mean, it, it just breeds success upon success upon success. And every year they, they produce crews of the highest quality from a pool of athletes. Um, who perhaps quite often individually aren't, aren't some of the biggest names on the circuit, but they are great in the sum of their parts. And so it's proving here, although the Grange School, Kings, Chester, Composite are leading this race, Hennington B are putting in a, a pretty impressive showing, it has to be said, and, and certainly holding their own against what looks like bigger and stronger girls. Race three hundred and twenty nine. semi-final of the senior quadruple skulls. Oxford Brooks University, Headington School. Attention! Headington crew, national schools, gold medalists, 
Uh, so they are racing upper category, they are a junior crew, um, but will be looking to win the Diamond Jubilee in a couple of weeks' time. But it looks like they might have met their match. Yeah, my goodness. The Oxford Brooks have really taken on. They're still, they're just pulling clear now, Oxford Brooks, so they come past our commentary position just before halfway. As you say, you know, rating, they're, rate, they're rowing in a, a senior, juniors rowing in a senior category. Brave. And look, I mean, it looks, you know, that as, as you'd expect, um, the Headington School crew absolutely immaculate. I think they're but they are, the you know, it's it, in terms of uh, power. Uh, the Oxford, the Oxford Brooks quad looking pretty immaculate as well. So it's a fantastic semi-final there. I think Headington were just winding it up as they came past us. You can see their bodies going right back. Um, towards the end of the stroke. It doesn't look like it's had too much on effect. the Brooks crew because they are, well, I think immaculate is exactly the word I would use. They're imperious as they come down the course and Headington might well <laughs> finally come unstuck because they could have chose, they could have raced Julie this weekend and probably swept all before them, but they've chosen to step up and they've chosen to, to uh, ratchet up their preparations ahead of the Diamond Jubilee in a couple of weeks' time. But Brooks once again demonstrating that they are the creme de la creme of student rowing. Yeah, I say it's an interesting decision. Um, a little look across there. I mean, they won, they won the national schools by about 10 seconds, Headington. So I suppose Ryan, who, who heads up their program, must have thought, well, we'll probably win the junior quads again by similar margin. So why don't we compete with a step up from there? And winners of the junior eights in 2016 and going for that again. And so they've got so much kind of depth in in there pushing them through. We were talking about juniors coming through the club system but still some of the, some of the schools are uh, really fantastic in, in, a build, in building um, girls rowing. Headington, you know, on the, if we look up on the right side of our screen, you know, we look down for 10 seconds and all of a sudden everything kicks off. It looks like Headington have rowed through Oxford Brooks. Well, we said both crews looked immaculate. Oxford Brooks looked like they had more of a powerful stroke. But uh, this Headington crew... What a scout this would be if Headington can pull this off. Okay, well, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad you kind of... We were, you were here this time. I, I wrote, wrote a single off who came through and won. And um, we're just, like I said, I'd never do that again. Um, it's never over till it's, it's over. I heard you say that. Goodness, look at that. That's impressive from Headington, I have to say. For a schoolgirl crew, that is so mature. This is, you know, this is what I was saying before. These... They're, they'll be doing exams. They're yeah. in the middle of everything. They're cramming this in. They will have, you know, some of them will be doing GCSEs. They'll be fitting this all in. They've gone now. They Amazing. were a length down, and they go through the. They almost got a length clear in the finish. Two lengths in in the space of 500 metres. Fantastic. Incredible, so we were it? saying, you, what, what, I think you were saying something about taking a bit of a gamble oh, moving oh, up I was there. I busy writing them off. And I think <laughs> no. I think I think <laughs> you said you know curse. we like to. Uh, Let's, let's just not do that again. No. Should we just not Good do idea. that again? Good very idea. mature, very mature, and you've got the record. You've got the course record. <laughs> Two thirds of the course, but Headington sculled with maturity to go through and to comfortably set a new record. Well done. Sort of starting thick and fast now. Yeah, aren't these they? are the junior eights. Uh, Headington School, St Paul's School, from the United States of America. Now I followed in, you and I are lucky enough to follow in the umpire launch doing a bit of commentating and uh, and I followed St Paul's and crikey they, they, they looked very good. Headington are the national champions having won national schools regatta and I think they won the uh, school head. Yep absolutely and it must so they, yeah so Best in Britain. Oh, I mustn't forget that Headington School have retained this title since 2011. They've held the Peabody Carp in this Junior 8 event at Henley Women's since 2011. Wow. So they are a force to be reckoned with. And actually, interestingly enough, you might like to know that this is actually Headington's second crew in this event because their top crew is obviously contesting the final of senior quads later on today as junior athletes. So this is athletes 5 to 12. And, somebody... and we've got a very yeah, enthusiastic Headington supporter outside of our, <laughs> our commentary box, and it is neck and neck. This is, is unbelievable. This, this is going to be one of the heck of a scrap. As I say, I followed some pools the other day. They looked incredibly well drilled and tidy. And if anything, it's some pools that have no more than about a foot 
over Headington. Oh my word, this is going, and in eight, if it's this close at 500 metres in, it's going to be this close the whole way down the track. And there will be an, an almighty roar as they go through the enclosures. There's a lot of Americans over here, and there's a lot of support for Headington. So this is a battle royal, United States of America, in the middle of the river, Headington. Oh my word, and looking at that drone footage England, there. Nearest you... to the bank, and looking at that shot, it's St Paul's. Uh, level, it is level. Even Headington, I think, maybe, just no, about bald, do you not think? Your think? glasses are a little rose no. tinted. It's on the surge. Headington are pushing. It's on Headington the surge. Headington are pushing, but. 37. See, their boat is. is so you have to look yeah, carefully that's true. where the bow board and, is. And actually, uh, having... Well, look, it's, 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 it's pretty damn close. It's very it? close. And, and th that is a wonderful shot. We're about halfway now. These eights are, are re very quick. And as how, we already said, quick conditions. How exciting is this? Now, with oh. camera angles, it's always very, very difficult to see. The overhead shot that looked like it was St Paul's had the advantage. Now we're looking Headington's at the drone. It about looks like Headington. A seat. But this is incredibly close. The camera... Go Headington! this side, St Paul's America the other side. close the camera angle will change very shortly as we see the crews top right going away from us they are now leaving the boat and enclosure they are pretty much what 500 meters to go I reckon right, 500 to go so barely anything less than two minutes in an eight so we I think Ryan Domain, obviously, who's been coaching at Headington for years and, and has developed this wonderful programme where losing isn't an, isn't the problem because they never do it. You know, Headington, uh, as I say, they're unbeatable, really. Well, not unbeatable, but well, believe what, they're what unbeatable. And it looks like Headington have, at the moment, just got the advantage. Maybe only a few seats. I think it's about two seats to Headington. There you go. So as they come past the camera angle there, Headington just starting to really uh, wind and press through the third, third of the race. Unbelievable stuff. I mean, but let's stay with this got a, amazing eight race. Right. We've got another course record in the Elite Lightweight Single. Another course record has just gone. That was the Elite Lightweight Singles. It was a win for, uh, for Maddie Arlett of Edinburgh. The time was 5.40 and she smashed it by a second. And right. two, two lengths. She won by two lengths. She won by two so, lengths. So, oh, Headington right. now has, away. have now sort of cut the cord and, and there they are. Hands go in the air. Now and that's, race. that's probably Brilliant. the closest race that Headington have had all year and I'm sure, amazing. you know, the girls from St Paul's will have enjoyed that as well because that is racing at its best. No, no.
We love you. Final senior quadruple skulls. Headington, Tideway Scullers. Attention. Go! And there's that very exciting race that's just gone off the start for the senior quadruple skulls um, between Headington on the left-hand side of your screen there and Tideway Scullers on the right-hand side of your screen. And boy, can I cannot wait um, for this to come you past us. You are getting quite excited. <laughs> I thought it was because I did the chair uh, instead of Martin. But uh, no, you're absolutely right. Uh, this is incredibly um, exciting. And, and apologies to the Scullers that we've moved away uh, from them. But you'll see how tight this race is going to be and, and you know, we've been handed some statistics. We've got our very own Stato oh, um, from all Oh no, really? Here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's English. Oh, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> taking the piss out of me, are you? Might. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's Headington School in this senior quadruple skulls final that have taken a canvas lead over the Tideway Sculler School yeah. quadruple skull. And this Headington School crew have had a couple of unfortunate years. They've been going for the, the Diamond Jubilee at Henley Royal um, and they've, they've just missed out every year to Gloucester Hartbury and this is their year I think they think and they've entered senior quads here so that they can get good competition so they know that they're at the right level to be able to win that this year. Um, Gloucester Hartbury of course in the junior event yeah. that we'll see a bit later on but um, if you're winning senior quads here at Henley Women's Regatta well, if you're in the final as a junior, senior, senior yeah. as a junior quad I think that's a pretty good sign. And they're in the lead. Uh, and oh. they are in the lead. And, and this is going to be a great race. There's only two seconds uh, between them in the semi-finals that they, they both run. Oh my word, look at that cruising speed from uh, Headington. Absolutely, you can see this thankfully on, on the drone footage. This is just a beautiful sight. I'm going to tingle here just by watching uh, these quads. It's uh, the, the boat speed, I wouldn't be surprised actually Camilla, we've got those new records. Looking at that boat speed going past us, I'd be surprised if we're not in for another course record here. No. I'm really surprised. It's three, three of the girls in that Headington quad um, were in last year's Headington quad, so they've remained wholly the same. Um, so they've spent a lot of time together when they've not been in the eight. And they raced it at national schools. They, they won it at national schools as well, I believe. And Tide Waste Girl has, of course, got a medal at the... British Rowing Championships uh, and uh, up against some very stiff competition, you know, from Leander and, and Molsey and all those guys. So Tideway Scullers actually also have a pretty good ref record at senior level as well. Um, so the, the Tideway Scullers crew, um, successful at the Metropolitan Regatta, I believe, as well, and have just up the rating no end. Look at that. Look at yeah, that wind really that's just get, happened. Aren't they? they just want to get back on our target for that sprint finish. There is going to be an absolutely massive sprint finish. Uh, and uh, listening to Martin earlier about front loading, certainly Headington had the better start. They want to get that psychological edge, but they are an experienced group with Tideway uh, School Well, scholars. here comes Tideway yep. Scholars. Look, they've eaten back, I think, at least a little bit, because I think Headington got out to probably about three quarters of the length, and I think it's now about half a length, yeah. actually, um, to and, and Headington. the difference between the, the two crews, of course, because uh, Headington School will probably be lighter, uh, less experienced, uh, Tideway Scullers, perhaps a little bit more powerful, maybe they've spent 
and I'm guessing here a little bit more time mm. in the gym rather than on the ergos. And uh, we'll see. They'll see them coming back. In saying that, I know that the bow girl from the, the Tideway Scholars crew is a lightweight Mimi Carlton. She's you know down at sort of 57 kilos most of the year. So, Gosh, that's nearly um, as heavy as me. So, so uh, in saying that the, the Headington School crew is lighter. Oh my word, look at this. Yeah, this look at the surge that's just come from Tideway great. Scholars. And this and is going to be a great responding. finish. And Headington, we need to stay with this race, I would imagine because this is going to be exciting right uh, uh, to the finish. There's no, no doubt about that. And I think Headington have responded, actually, because that's drawn back out again. And this would be an emphatic end to the regatta for Headington School. They've just won the junior Peabody eights. Cup, the Junior Eights, in a record time. And here they are leading a senior event. And in, in the semi-final, they equaled the record for this event. No, sorry, they set a new record yeah, for they this did. event. They, so they set a new record in the semi-final. And... As well, school we think, girls, we that's think they're going to break. Well, I'm, we'll see. But uh, this is the here the come Tideway Scholars. Look, here they come. Here comes the wind. And if we can cut to this senior quadruple skulls event, this is going to be so tight on the line. Here come Tideway Scholars, and they've taken. <laughs> Half a length this on so Headington, exciting. and I think Tideway Scholars have just about responding. got their nose out in front ahead of oh Headington. And oh my word, I am not going to be able to call that on the line. <laughs> that what a brilliant, that brilliant was race. sensational. Take three hours, you'd be pleased to know, but it's okay because we're all one big happy family. So, what a fantastic event! It's been absolutely brilliant this weekend. Um, Lucy, my daughter, has asked me to say a few words, and I think the next time she asks me to say a few words, I'll be embarrassing her. I think, <laughs> but for today, just two things I want to cover. One of them is I just want to say thank you very much to the parents of the captain and vice captain from last year. So Marianne and Ian, to Ali and Richard, Richard here taking videos as we speak. They've been there for us the whole time. They've been up at the crack of dawn, they've been motivating, they've been taking videos as Richard is doing now. They've held the whole thing together. So we've had spectacular events, beautiful designs, Delicious nosh, great evenings. All of these events have been put together Amazing by this club. The workers, the motivators, 
filling up the trailer at five o'clock in the morning, ordering the gas, taking the tough decisions, getting these girls rowing. <laughs> come on, coaches, come on down. Come on. Come on. Um, it's now time to say goodbye to some of our JE teams. It has been such an honour and privilege for us to train and race with you guys, who are such hardworking and experienced athletes. We have some gifts to give you, but first just a few words. An event with such success like this, it would not be, a, be possible without the parent support and uh, a really massive, heartfelt um, thank you to the parents. And I, kind of, I remember a few of your faces from many years back when you arrived as up three parents and um, and fresh faced, and then suddenly you met by a talk from me, um, which probably was maybe a bit intimidating and so forth. And but um, the result is some phenomenal young woman like this who you have been um, behind the whole way. And um, it's very you know nice for you to give us a big pat to the back, but you you guys have been the backbone of their success. And uh, I want to say a really big thank you um, to, to all of you for your support. Believers, all the very best. Um, you're going to be missed. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, but uh, you, you left a fantastic legacy with these girls, and uh, no doubt they will take that that mantle from you and, and take the club and do great things. Um, so thank you very much to you, and thank you very much to the parents. Thanks. Ryan.